open source. Something that we actually say right. This is so awesome. It's that process that a developer or let's say as the Kubernetes ecosystem really boomed. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, we're happy to have you here. Uh, this is the Ask an OpenShift admin live stream. Uh, the, this live stream is part of the Red Hat Office Hours series. So just like in Office Hours you would have in college with your professor, uh, where you go and ask a bunch of questions, that's what we're here for. So feel free to uh, ask us any questions about our topic today, which is the Trusted Artifact Signer. Uh, or about OpenShift or Red Hat in general, or pretty much anything. You know, we'll, we'll do our best to get it answered. Uh, today's topic, again, is the Red Hat Trusted Artifact Signer. It's a tech preview feature that just came out. A lot of cool stuff with another, it's, it's tightly related coupled, I think. Hopefully I'm not stepping on my toes here like by saying this, but it's pretty tightly coupled with uh, the, the upstream uh, project uh, six store, right? So a lot of the components of that. So if you remember back to our October security series, right before KubeCon, we, we talked about all the different things leading up, right, uh, for security. And at the end of that was the uh, DevSecOps pipeline. And part of that pipeline was, you know, having a, a resource get signed and then, you know, uh, uh, pushed into our repo. So that way we knew, you know, hey, this thing is good to go. We, you know, like we sign it, we trust it, and, you know, it's awesome. So this is this is like how all that magic actually happens, and so we've got a we've got a good crew of people here today. Uh, Sally, I don't know if you remember me, but we met very briefly at KubeCon. Like I I I was that weird guy that came up and interrupted you. Like I I think we've worked loosely together for like the last year on a couple different things, and so it was it was mm -hmm. cool to actually like get to meet you in person. So uh, oh yeah, it's pretty cool. Nice. Definitely, KubeCon was a great time. It was it was it was that was my first one, and so uh, you know getting to go and oh. experience it and. Uh, no, you're good. You're good. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was my first time since COVID. So. Oh, yeah. nice. First conference nice. since COVID. Yeah. Did you present, or were you just there as a? I know? did. Uh, I I overextended myself during KubeCon. Actually, oh, I nice. presented um, on yeah a few things. Sustainability. I did. Um, I talked about Kepler, and uh, how awesome. Kepler can be combined with Open Telemetry Collector, awesome. and then um, I was interviewed on the Cube. So that was pretty exciting and a little bit nerve wracking. Yeah. Um, but we talked, yeah, we talked about um, mostly about edge on the cube. And then uh, I presented the trusted artifact signer at OpenShift Commons. So that was fun. And that was like a day before we announced tech preview. Uh, so I kind of gave it a sneak sneak preview before it was actually out. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. getting it out there. Hey, so you must have been, by the time Friday got around, you must have been like ready to go home, go to yeah, bed. I like. <laughs> will not do that to myself again. That was not a good idea. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Um, all right, cool. So, uh, you know, we're going to start off by doing the top of mine, and then I'll have uh, Vita kick it off for introductions. But uh, the top of mine, really the biggest one is this is the last stream of the year. So we've made it, we're 121 episodes in. Uh, we're going to pick back up after the new year and, you know, between between the asking OpenShift admin and GitOps Guide to the Galaxy, I think that between those two office hours, we've got a lot of excellent content coming up. And I think that we felt the security series was, you know, pretty uh, successful in that we were able to start small and go big and then, you know, make an impact. Uh, leading up into so, you know leading up into KubeCon and leading up into some releases and stuff like that. So I think we're going to try and keep that going, especially with uh, big projects like ACM and stuff like that. Uh, and and security is always going to be uh, on the mind of everything of everybody like all the time now, right? So I think that as these new security features are coming out, right, we're going to do our best to make sure that we're putting that out there and and you know making it available to to you know our viewers. Um, but the other one is. You know, I was in an OpenShift Commons briefing last week, and uh, one of the viewers was asking for, uh, like, hey, how do I submit an RFE? And so I thought it was as simple as just going to the RFE Jira page and submitting one, but it is not. So um, I, I think the right way to submit an RFE is to go through your account team uh, or submit a Bugzilla. But if you want to see which RFEs are available, you can go to this link that I'm sharing here. and. Um, once you get there, you don't have to have an account to log in. It's a it's a public Jira page, and you can see all the RFPs that are out there. So you can you can go out there and check and see if like, hey, is, is the thing that I want you know already being asked for, and is it being worked on and stuff like that. So um, just a, a good place to go out and get some information. And then 
Uh, a shameless plug here for my my coworker Marty Jackson, who briefed at OpenShift Commons yesterday on uh, you know secrets in GitOps and secrets in OpenShift. Uh, go out and check this out because Marty did a really good job of breaking down like why we use secrets or, or how we manage secrets in GitOps. And so if you're if you're struggling to figure that out, go check this out because Marty did a really good job. And then I'm going to still a little bit of our team here is Thunder, and I'm going to post their release blog from the developers website. Uh, and so this has got, I, I read through this this morning. It's, it's really good. There's a lot of links in there that you can go to. Um, they have scripts that set up key cloak and things like that for you. Uh, you know, so like if you want to go out there and kick the tires with it, um, you know, go check out that blog and, you know, let us know if it's that, if it's working, uh, or if you have any problems, right? So I'm Johnny at redhat.com and, and Sully is Sully at redhat.com or definitely andrew.sullivan at redhat.com. Um, and speaking of Sully, so he's not here today because he's out, you know, saving the world, uh, doing a road show for Red Hat, you know, so uh, he's not here. He's, he's too busy, you know, so, you know, you guys have to sit through this and, you know, suffer through it with me. Uh, Thor, my man, how you doing? Uh, and then finally, this is the last one and I'll, I'll kick it over to you, Peter. Uh, if you want to become familiar with OpenShift Commons, Karina Angel is doing such an awesome job of you know, making sure that that community is staying afloat and she's doing all these awesome things with the special interest groups and stuff like that. And she is just like, I don't know how she's got the time or the focus or just the visibility into all this stuff, but she is just doing an incredible job and she's setting up these different special interest groups. So if you're interested in edge or if you're interested in security or, or validated patterns, you know, like she's setting up these different groups and getting them online and having them come talk to things. So yeah, come check it out. And yes, I'm gonna block this guy. So yes, um, check out the comments.openshift.org. It's awesome. And uh, yeah, Karina, if you're listening or if you're watching later, you're you're doing an outstanding job. I don't know how you do it. I think it's amazing. So um, more power to you because it's it's awesome. Uh, and so with all that, with all the craziness, my hyper trying to trying to get everything out in one breath. Vita, please introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Johnny. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Veda Shankar. I'm a product manager in the trusted software supply chain team uh, in the application developer BU at Red Hat. Uh, I'll let the others introduce themselves. And then, uh, Johnny, are you sharing my sc the, the screen already or not yet? Uh, because we can first do the intro and then we'll share. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, we could first do the intro and then we'll come back. Yeah, I thought the names will be there. Okay, go ahead. Uh, next, uh, Sally. <laughs> hey. Yep, uh, Sally O'Malley. Um, I am a principal software engineer. I'm in the emerging tech. Um, so I switch projects a lot. And for the past, I don't know, six months or so, we've been heads down working on um, Trusted Artifact Miner, which is our implementation of Sixcore. And Greg? Thanks, Sally. I'm also a software engineer in the Emerging Technologies Department Platform and Services team. Um, just like Sally, transferred on about six months to the Trusted Artifact Signer team, and I've been helping with the productization there. Go ahead, Marcus. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so my name is Marcus Nago. Um, I'm a technical marketing manager in the application services business unit. Um, uh, the thing is, I've been working in services at Red Hat for uh, six years. Before that, uh, uh, another company with, uh, with a three-letter acronym <laughs> that now owns us um, for 17 years, uh, also in services. And I just uh, a year ago or so uh, switched over to technical marketing, so writing blog posts, uh, of helping teams with collateral um, that's needed, and also, well, being on stream shows like this. So hope you enjoy. Yeah, well, I'm glad to have all of you here. Um, we don't normally have this many people, so it's it's like my, my ADD is kind of bouncing around trying to make sure I'm keeping up. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad all of y'all showed up. And uh, this is a, an interesting topic, right? Because like we've done DevSecOps security and supply chain security and stuff like that. These conversations have come up a lot. And yeah, you know, we've, I think Cosign was still pretty new with Sixdoor or Sixdoor was just kind of like g gaining some popularity, right? And so we were using Cosign and Recore a little bit. And so to see that we've, we as a company have taken a big step and in, in productized and, you know, basically like, all right, let's make this legit for us, right? Let's, let's start using it. I think it's, 
it's an awesome leap forward and it's shown that we're really taking supply chain security like very seriously and I, it's it's awesome yep um, agreed do you want me to share yeah yeah johnny go ahead and share that way i'll quickly touch upon the agenda so that's the team uh that's going to be presenting to you and uh <clears throat> So I'll take just about four or five minutes. In fact, half the story I was going to say, I think Johnny already did by revealing the blog. <laughs> so uh, I'll talk about our, you know, the trusted artifact signer, and then we'll from there we'll do the deployment, uh, which Marcus will show, uh, and then testing with Cosign. Uh, Sally will also kind of collaborate and sh uh, talk about some of the stuff here. And then we'll uh, do the uh, recore, you know, transparency log, uh, and then finally Greg is going to show us the um, how it's integrated to an OpenShift pipeline. Um, so how does this uh, the trusted artifact signer fit in? Right, I just wanted to show this visual so that way, you know. Uh, how does it fit into this Red Hat ecosystem, right? So it is it, basically part of the, the solution for securing the software supply chain. And uh, Trusted Artifact Signer uh, is in tech preview today, and we plan to GA it in March. Uh, so it's kind of an important tool that goes very well with the, the developer hub and the trusted content and profile analyzer. So that's where it fits in. Um, now, just quickly, what is Trusted Artifacts? In it? So simply put, it's just a, a cryptographic signature tool that um, empowers the software developers and consumers to basically securely sign and verify artifacts. Uh, now, these artifacts can be like source code, uh, release files, uh, container images, you know, binaries, uh, S bombs, right? Uh, now, uh, they can also be your Ansible playbooks. Um, so it's essentially a production ready deployment of the SIG store, open store, SIG store project within an enterprise. Uh, you know, and, and, and when you say it's a signature tool, people say, hey, we are already using GPG signing. Uh, why, uh, you know, uh, six store, uh, right? What What is the main uh, benefit of that? And I would say there are two uh, key things that really, really differentiates uh, six store. One is that it is uh, it has a keyless feature, right? Uh, so which kind of overcomes the difficulties with traditional long live keys uh, like GPG signing, uh, and it has a record transparency log. So that means in addition to verifying your signature, you can also go to this tamper resistant transparency log for verifying. Uh, now, the uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, Six Store uh, actually uh, is quite popular as a service. So there's a public good instance of Six Store. Uh, you should uh, definitely check it out. Uh, yeah, uh, Veda, if you don't mind me interrupting, I can't yeah. see you, but um, if that's okay. So um, the public good instance of SIGSTOR is uh, maintained by a group of, a small group of people, um, a, a group of SREs from all different companies uh, that uh, two are from Red Hat, Lily Sturman and myself, and there are a few people from GitHub, Google, um, uh, stack stack locks and uh yeah so we get together every week and we go over every single page that that the person who was on call um has received and we keep we keep the public good instance of six store running uh so that you know thousands of open source developers can use it to uh, sign their their artifacts uh it integrates with github it's it's great um it's very, it's actually very complicated to maintain this um, keyless signing stack. 
And we recognize that uh, at Red Hat. And we also recognize that our customers are not going to uh, be you know, tapping into the public good instance is a lot of data um, identity situation, you know, it's just not going to work for most of our customers. So that's really where the idea started with like, let's bring this uh, to a production ready, like enterprise, private, you maintain your own stack of six store. So I just wanted to add that. Oh, no, perfect. It's just exactly what I was going to say. So like the uh, six store is really popular, uh, I, I guess, uh, lots of uh, you know attraction in the community uh and they for the root certificate they're using the six store right and also the pub the ledger is public but many enterprises would prefer their own instance right uh, use their own root certificates use their own single sign-on you know for privacy reasons uh and, and that's why we feel that we are filling that need that enterprises have uh where they want to protect, you know, their IP development process, you know, and they'd like to have a private, you know, ledger. Uh, and, you know, again, security, I, I, I don't have to go into the details of why we need it, because if you just have to uh, look at your news and every day there's a hack, right? I think uh, last week it was 23 and me, like half of all our, the, uh, the customers, uh, you know, uh, genetic information was re revealed. Uh, so the, 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 the thing is we need security at every stage, right? From code, build, uh, deploy, monitor. So we should be kind of continuously, you know, uh, looking for vulnerabilities, uh, all throughout the supply chain. Right. And, uh, so you need to kind of make sure right at the, uh, that the malicious code doesn't get in, you know, you have to basically make sure the build system, uh, the sa safeguards to it. And then we have to continuously monitor at runtime, uh, right? And so that's where I think cryptographic t uh, keys uh, really comes in to attest to the identity um, uh, so that everything is uh, uh, right from the code check-in all the way to build. Everything is digitally signed and verified. Uh, we, uh, and now there's also, you must have heard about Salsa uh, compliance. So there's a way to make sure that before you admit an artifact into your uh, production, you can basically verify that it's salsa, you know, compliant, you know, level three or level four. Uh, can, and, can I get you to just explain what, what salsa is? Like just, you know, for those that aren't in the know uh, what the salsa acronym stands for and really what it, what it's designed to do. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So sal salsa uh, is a set of, what is it, a framework? Yeah, uh, to chain yeah. levels for software artifacts. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. And, and uh, there's different levels. Each level is, um, you know, more hardened, I guess. Um, so it's actually it used to be four levels, but recently, like with the um, the recent re like official release, it's actually like it goes up to level three, and it's it's only implemented right now for the the builds. Um, if you, you can, you can find this out upstream, be much more explained much better than I am. Um, but the idea is it checks certain things like, um, has any, was there any possibility that anyone could have, um, touched the build, you know, could have interacted with the build system. It's the build system hermetic, um, is, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, <laughs> I'll have to. You know what I'll do is I'll uh, Sally, I'll put a nice blog. Yes, thank you. Uh, it's uh, from the enterprise contract tool, uh, which is actually works uh, wonderfully well with uh, you know trusted artifact signer. Uh, so once you uh, create a container image, take it into your uh, registry. You know you sign it automatically, create a attestation, and. Uh, basically, enterprise uh, tool can actually look at how that artifact was created. Because many times, by just looking at an artifact, we don't know. We can trust if we know how it was created, right? Uh, and and that's the ability that it gives you. Uh, and it'll give you like you know what compliance level it needs and all that. So let me put that in the blog. Uh, right. Uh, this is my last slide, and then I'm, it'll be over to Marcus to uh, kind of really show the 
you know how it all works uh i think the most important thing i already touched upon the immutable ledger uh and then uh the the key is we are going to be using like an open id uh you know uh, for um assigning right so that basically provides the identity so the the, the, when you say keyless, it doesn't mean really keyless. You're just having ephemeral keys that can be just, you know, discarded after, you know, 10 minutes, right? But you're going to base it, uh, base the identity of the attestation on an open ID uh, identity, which could be coming from GitHub, Microsoft, Google accounts. Uh, but at the same time, you can bolt on your own single sign on uh, service also. Okay, I think uh, let's get started with uh, seeing it in action. So over to you, Marcus. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so um, if you could just uh, share my screen. Ah, yeah, all right. Thank you. Uh, so just just a quick highlight. Uh, um, basically, a lot of the links um, that we're <laughs> sharing are also part. <laughs> all good, Johnny. Uh, also part of this uh, announcement uh, block that we put out um, and uh, also a little bit of explanation of the background uh, and uh, I will be referring to like for example you need to uh, you need to get it here that's this link uh, sign and uh, uh, so uh, Veda also had uh, the link to this blog here um, in his presentation uh, which will also be shared I guess and uh, also, if you just go to developers Red Hat and search for a uh, uh, um, uh, trusted artifact signer, as you can see here, the title, then you will have everything. And just before I go into the uh, into the actual demo, just one highlight here. And if you go to the um, uh, we're Red Hat, we're all about open source. So if you go to the upstream community to um, uh, to Sigstor. Um, you will see there is a lot of talks. So if you just search uh, the, the various YouTube streams uh, for Sigstore, there's a lot of great demos there. Uh, but also a couple of a couple of videos that talk about well, how do I make all these components? So I won't go into detail here. But we have, uh, as Veda mentioned, we have uh, the transparency log, which is called Recore. Um, we have an uh, uh, an underlying background component that is called Trillion. We have uh, Folsio. Um, um, we have our, our tool set here that needs to communicate with uh, uh, with these components. So how do I make this runnable on OpenShift or, or Kubernetes in general? So uh, that is a recurring theme to uh, a lot of these uh, things. And uh, this is basically what we're doing here. So uh, making this consumable, uh, deployable and obviously also supported and hardened uh, um, uh, for enterprise use. Uh, so that's what this is all about. And um, yeah, with that being said, uh, let me quickly uh, two windows here. share a different window. And now where is... Yeah, and, and real quick, Marcus. Um, so Jay Ryan just asked, why isn't GPG good enough and why is this better? Well, I, I can just I can just quickly chime in uh, there. Um, the simplest reason that there are many, and and I wouldn't necessarily say that one is better than the other. It serves a different purpose and has a different uh, a different, let's say, uh, without without a bad connotation. It has a different overhead. One of the key features is um, uh, uh, Sigstor has been developed to ease the use of crypto cryptographic signing by hiding all the necessary technical details under the hood, if you will. So mm -hmm. signing and verification becomes a service, if, uh, if you will, that is installed somewhere on your Kubernetes, on OpenShift, uh, uh, in the future also uh, on, on your RHEL deployments. Um, so it becomes, it becomes a service. I don't have to worry about managing keys, uh, uh, probably revoking keys because what we have is quote unquote keyless signing well obviously there's still keys involved otherwise i couldn't sign but uh, as veda said uh, those keys are uh, ephemeral keys there will be just there for like uh, default 10 minutes um, you sign your stuff with it and then they will expire 
So even if those were leaked, they could nobody could do any harm. Nobody could sneak in uh, different artifacts uh, using that key because it already has expired. So that's the keyless part of it. And all this issuing keys, um, um, attaching those keys to a trusted identity using OIDC, that's all happening, for example, with one of these components I've just shown, uh, uh, Falcio, um, or Falcio, so <laughs> whatever the pronunciation is. I, I was uh, wondering, so I was yeah. going to go with Falcio because you're calling it Falcio. I was like, all right, because I've been calling it I've, Falcio. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard Fulcio also. Oh, there yeah. we go. Yeah, I, I wanted to add about the PGP stuff. So, um, so like Marcus said, the keyless signing is a big selling point of SigStore. And what I mean by that is like it actually um, enables people to easily verify. And with PGP, um, first of all, like not everybody uses it because it's um, there's just no not like a universal implementation of it that everybody knows about. Um, and so because of that, uh, no one verifies. Even if something is signed, they're not verifying. So if you have signed software signed with PGP, but it's you're not verifying it before you use it, like it, it doesn't do any good. So Sigstore's aim is to really make all of this really easy. Um, their motto or their mission is to make um, encrypted, to make um, signing software uh, what like like what um, Let's Encrypt did for encrypting websites. Sigstore wants to be that for software signing and verifying. Um, like you remember 10 years ago, you could go to some websites and they didn't all have the little lock. And like, mm -hmm. if you were buying something, you know, I had to tell my kids like, we're not going to that site, it doesn't have the lock, that is total sketch. And so, um, uh, but now it's very difficult. Now, if you see one that's not locked, you just know, like, mm -hmm. don't go there or like, yeah. And so that's what we want, that's what we want. Uh, software signing to be like it's it's just always done it's, and it's always verified I, I like the comparison right the let's encrypt to websites yeah. that cosign what, like what let's encrypt is to website is what cosigns cosign is to artifacts I, I think that that's that's awesome one thing i think is really awesome too is the uh, the revocation because anybody that's worked in any type of environment where yeah somebody leaves somebody gets ousted somebody somebody just they won the lottery whatever it was that happened and they had to leave immediately and you have to go in and figure out like, okay, what credential was used? Did they have access to that credential? Uh, how do I change it? How do I pull it? You know, there's a lot of drama that goes into that, right? And you hope that you understand your environment that well, but like sometimes you, you, you pick up, you know, you, you, you uh, what's the word? You inherit somebody else's environment and then you end up maintaining it for a while. And I think a good example of that was when uh, Reddit a couple of years ago, or maybe it was last year, their, their Kubernetes cluster went down. And part of it was like, they, they had so much churn and then you know like they're, they're closer going down there like, oh, well you know we just kind of inherited this thing it was just running and so it is yeah. what it is you know i i, I think I've, i know i've seen it personally at least in you know a, a couple of customer environments where somebody had left and that credential was still being used downstream and so now to have something to be able to pull that back you know easily i think is that's just it's amazing so I'll, I'll shut up and marcus if you want me to share your screen Sorry, i also put the blog uh you know link for the enterprise contract is a great blog on how you know about how to kind of spell out uh, get, get a report on the salsa compliance oh perfect and awesome. work beautifully well with uh, uh cosine and yeah. awesome and what when this is when the stream is done um if you allow me to share the slides then I'll, I'll i'll put the slides up and then i'll put all the links that we're sharing today uh in the description of the youtube video so that way you can go back and go to them so that don't feel like you have to you know try and get to them right now okay awesome Thank all right marcus here we go I also love all the uh, um, the community names so um, and, and product names. So we have uh, Salsa, and then there's, uh, not sure if you know it, but beyond the scope of this call is uh, uh, there's the Guac uh, community. So Salsa, Guacamole. Oh, Guac, well, yeah. Here's the tacos. <laughs> I never put those two together. <laughs> Was it meant to be a sort of pun? Well, if, don't ask me, but uh, well, they they go well together. I have to say, well, so from the product perspective, as also from the taste perspective. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So just uh, I don't want to waste uh, anyone's time. Just uh, just a quick one here. So what what I'm what I'm showing is this document here. Uh, um, so this um, uh, uh, this deployment guide is also linked from that blog post I mentioned. So that's that's the important thing. 
And uh, yeah, a quick reminder, we're in tech preview. So uh, we're also relying uh, on your feedback. Um, so also at the bottom of that, uh, of that blog post is also a, uh, a feedback email address. So if you encounter anything uh, that you think could be better or is uh, unexpected, whatever, please do, uh, um, please do send us an email. So um, what I'm what I'm planning to do is just quickly follow this guide here, um, and um, I, as I said, I don't want to waste anyone's time. Uh, the important thing is before you start, um, just uh, grab your poll secret because uh, we're uh, we're pulling uh, images uh, from a Red Hat registry. So download the poll secret here. Um, log into that link is also in the deployment guide, of course. So uh, where, where actually is it? Um, you passed it. If yeah. you go, it's right there in the middle in that important block right there. The hybrid cloud console? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Seen that too many times here. Yeah, okay. So um, grab your grab the key there. Um, have it uh, uh, have it available because the installation script will basically ask you where's the full path for that key, and that's that. Okay, and uh, as I said, one of the things uh, that many people are wondering is how do I get all these components uh, uh, deployed? Well, that's one thing. How do I configure uh, them so they can talk to each other? Uh, that's another thing, the more complicated one, and that's um, basically as simple as, let me quickly now share another window here. Uh, Johnny, I think my screen is being shared, right? Are, are we... So if you can share, if you can share my command line. Yeah, oh, everyone can read yep. it of the mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Okay, and it's basically as easy as that. That's, that's one of the key things we did. Uh, we created uh, a shell script, and uh, basically that shell script uh, also uses Helm charts um, to install it, um, uh, to install it on your OpenShift cluster. So the things I'm skipping here is I pulled down uh, the repository where this is part of. You can see release one zero beta. Um, that's uh, uh, that's the uh, the, the, um, the branch I'm currently in, and that's also what's part of the documentation. And uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. So I will just fire it up for the fun of it. Yeah. And you see a couple of things happening here. And uh, well, this will this will run a certain while. Uh, just a couple of things. What what's happening? Well, the, the full stack is installed, and also for you, uh, for, for ease of use, um, uh, for ease of use to try, um, there's uh, an o, uh, OIDC provider, in our case, Keycloak, um, that is being deployed with uh, default users. Um, and uh, you can also, there's also in the, uh, in the deployment guide, um, a quick uh, explanation how to um, how to add your uh, test user if you, if you will well beyond the uh, beyond the installation guide is uh, or the deployment guide is uh, uh, how to configure it this this uh, tech preview release with your own OIDC um, but um, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Of course. It's a, of course, it's a live demo. Yeah, right. Demo gods. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, well. Oh well, there we go. Looks That's like it. it's moving along. Yep. Yeah, you just got to give up. That's what it is. It, it was just waiting That's for you funny. To I've never. Yeah, I've never seen that in the logs. Yeah, I haven't either. I think it has something to do with lack of networking, like in terms of you know just the connection there maybe if it's mm -hmm. weak on the client side but, yeah let me let me just uh, real quick while you're okay oh, did you want to talk about this margus yeah well um so uh, the falcio falcio whatever <laughs> so uh we basically for for signing we need a root certificate 
so this is the tech preview. You can uh, you can uh, um, study. We have a good explanation of what the install script actually does. Um, if you don't have any uh, any root certificate that you want to include, uh, uh, basically this is the step here where this one is created. Um, and uh, uh, you can see in the explanation in the deployment guide also where that is. And uh, you could also check in your uh, your own uh, pen files if you wanted to. It's, it's very straightforward. But uh, for the sake of uh, the demo, before I break anything more. Um, <laughs> just... Yeah, this is basically going through some open SSL commands to create a yeah. signed certificate and a exactly. CA. Um, yep. And then besides that, the script also uh, puts these uh certificates and signing keys in the right secrets in the right namespaces um with the right um, permissions and all i nice. thought i'd help you out because i can't type and talk at the same time so i figured i would that might be the same for you see sally's been there she yeah. knows what it's like to try and demo and then explain what you're doing at the same time and then it, it just look awful because you can't yeah you're typing and backspacing yeah. like crazy yeah Right, and this is where it asks you for the for the pull secret, and um, I just need to pull it up here. Here it is. And for anyone who doesn't know what the Red Hat SSO is, um, it's a, a Keycloak. It it uses Keycloak. It's the Red Hat Identity Provider. Um, and so we've just simply installed the operator and we created some Keycloak custom resources like a couple of users, uh, the realm, the, the all of these things that you would have to spend hours looking up how to connect to six store stack. We've made it super easy for you. Yeah, that's awesome. Because I, I feel like that's that would be like the biggest hurdle yeah. for people to get started, right? Yeah, that's that's yeah, very yeah, very like powerful. where do you start? I, I don't mm -hmm. even know really what an identity provider is. And like, yeah. 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 Well, that's one one of the key things. So that makes it uh, that makes it super straightforward. Just to um, here we go again. Well, I have a 200, 250 uh, uh, megabit down and forty uh, forty megabit up. But that's, uh, that's not very good. Yeah, that's like right? dial up these days, man. Like, yeah, dude, I have <laughs> I have one gig up, one gig. Down. I'm waiting for fiber, but we're in Germany. It's basically third oh. world country when it comes to uh, connectivity. <laughs> well. It's impressive, I guess, that it's actually working. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, what else is going on now? So uh, the 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 script is creating these secrets with all, with with the signing keys and the resources. It's spinning up for the recourse server, spinning up a Falsio server, um, yeah. connecting them the, all. The charts. It's, Yep, and uh, upstream with the public good instance, and basically the only way to deploy a six store stack right now is with the um, Helm charts. It's a it's a, a chart that pulls all of the components together: um, Recor, Fulcio, Trillion, um, certificate transparency log. Um, what else, guys? Timestamp authority, tough. Mm -hmm. The yeah, tough. Yep, and. And, and, and like uh, it's it's one uh, Helm chart that includes all of the other Helm charts. So we we actually um, worked upstream with that, and um, and then we pull in all of the OpenShift stuff around it, like cluster role bind cluster role bindings, mm -hmm. security contacts constraints, plus the signer. Plus we install a test um, cosign pod for signing things in cluster. Um, rather than you know signing them back and forth from the command line, if you want. So, I know back in the day, like back in the day, might not have been that long ago, like a month or two, maybe six months ago, something like, within the last year. Um, you know, there was not like an official, like image container image that had like cosine or record in it. Is that still the case? Like, are, are we still waiting on yeah. the, like the official build to go out into the public registry, or um, is uh, that available now? Oh, you mean uh, the Red Hat build of them or yeah. Up, upstream? Yeah, um, Veda, you can say that because I never know what's out and what's not. Uh, sorry, uh, what is the question? Yeah, so um, like, oh, go, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, do we have official, um, can can users just pull down a cosine image um, now? And like, do we have our builds available? I know they're behind a pull secret, but. Uh, actually, you know, yeah. It, Right now, what we have uh, with this tech preview is you're, you're, you can install it on OpenShift. Yeah, you can also use the OpenShift pull secret, right? Because we have a cluster 
you you have one of those and all the binaries the cosine a record cli git sign everything is available from that cluster you can download the binary oh, yeah. that we have today uh but what we are introducing in our uh, next release in jan uh we'll have a separate you know a binary available from a known uh, a red hat you know uh, website yeah so but today you'd go to your open shift you will see the question mark you'll click that mm -hmm. command line tools download the yeah exactly okay, okay. gotcha you can Marcus, also go to I the also, catalog i also know what the what the problem is here with this cluster well demo gods well i did, didn't sacrifice a cat um, oh no yeah uh, sir forgot about that um ran out of cats basically it looks like it's but, progressing yeah, but the thing is uh, that uh, uh, we have uh, a lot of a lot of jobs here uh, from the OpenShift marketplace. Uh, so basically, oh. something something kicked off on that cluster, which mm -hmm. I provisioned like uh, this morning. But uh, Once so the some, tough something tough else is happening there, right? I also. think we just need to look at the tough copy. If that completes, then I think we're good. Yeah. And Greg, real quick, you were, you were going to say something about the image. Oh, I was just going to say, in terms of like getting access to the image binaries, we hope to package them for TP2 or GA as an RPM. But you can also go to the Red Hat Certified Catalog, and we have all the uh, S2I images with the binaries tarred for Darwin, for Linux, and for Windows awesome. architectures. So you can okay. use them as builder images there. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, because before what I was doing is I was, I was building the cosine image and record image essentially separately, and then mm -hmm. just calling that in as a um, image stream to to you know, be able to run the cosine CLI. So that's yes, glad to hear it. Um, Marcus, do you have access to the console? Yeah, so it's done. Yay! So, yay! Yeah. Finally, but three minutes—that's finally. Yeah. That didn't take yeah. long at all. You know how long <laughs> it would take. <laughs> That's like our 90 resources, including yeah. like two big operators. There's yeah. a there's a lot that goes on in this install. Yeah, there are like six right. services. Once you have Grafana and all that up, you'll see like, oh my god, that's a lot of stuff that went through. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if, if if you could show the console, I'm not sure if you can. We could show yeah, how to absolutely, pull absolutely. the. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just need to share a different window. Do you know where to see the console CLI downloads? I can point it out. Yep. Cool. Uh, just have to find the right window. Okay. So if you could share that with it with the audience, then uh, where is it? So. So just go up to the question mark. Yeah, just to make sure because it's oh, behaving yeah. a little oddly. I'll just refresh it here. That's what you mean, right? Yep. Command line tools. And after the installation, you yay. will have, yay. That is <laughs> awesome. I know. Yes. <laughs> so cosine, git sign, and also the record CLI. So it's all here. Very cool. Right. And it's the little will, things. Yeah, we'll also have enterprise contract in our next, uh, you know, release in Jan. Right. So um, I'll just. Uh, I also wanted to quickly verify the installation um, with uh, uh, with uh, signing and verifying. Just one thing. Uh, also, what we did uh, is um, there is a little script that is called. Um, just a second. Task and variables. So that helps you with uh, another, another window. Really keeping you on your toes, right, Johnny? That's right. I, That's right. I'm, I'm focused. I can fill in. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, there's a whole bunch of um, environment variables in order to configure your cosine to work with your stack. Um, by default, yeah. if you pull down cosine from upstream, it's it's automatically, I think, by default configured to work against the public good instance. So you have to initialize it against your stack. And yeah, he can show that. Yeah. So 
to see it does uh, does a couple of things. So it gets the uh, server host name and then makes sure that uh, uh, all those variables are pointing to the endpoints on your cluster. So you don't have to worry about that. And once you've done that, you can follow uh, you can follow the uh, deployment guide, basically uh, doing a, a cosign initialize, then signing uh, uh, signing a container or whatever um, or uh, git sign. So all the tools we've just shown, all the tools are here. And I will just, so it's 14 um, minutes to the hour. So I, will yeah, just so I, I, I think it would be great to hear from Greg. Uh, you know, yes, that's, some, that's uh, why I'm stopping. Uh, you know, his perspectives on how this fits in with the uh, supply chain. How does it fit with, uh, you know, Tekton, Tekton chains, uh, you know. So Greg, uh, if you could, you know, and then also, I know you have done a, a recording which you can share, uh, but yeah. Yeah, um, due to some uh, extenuating circumstances, I'm basically going to be talking over the video of the previous demo, um, which is fine. It's all applicable and you guys will get to see a demo. Um, but yeah, the name of the game for the TP2 release is basically extending user experience for you know, the different workflows that people have, meeting that in whatever way we can. That's why Jenkins is an ideal candidate for a feature there. Um, so hopefully, this is just the beginning, um, and that's kind of what this pipelines repo that I'm going to demo to you guys is going to be about, which is just we're providing you the tools, take it, you know, and run with it, make it whatever you'd like to. So um, I do have this video recording, so let me know whenever my screen is up. And yeah, I'll, I'll start sharing it. Just like I, I just want to ask a quick question, especially yeah. on the tech time pipeline uh, aspect. Sure. You know, like um, from a from a task file or a um, you know even an overall pipeline or mm -hmm. is. Is the team going to publish like a an RH TAS pipeline or TAS file that's going to be out in like Tecton Hub that we can go and pull down and you know that way we can actually just call this file individually and just like plug our params in and then go or is it going to be like just go to a Red Hat doc site and pull it down? So I've packaged this as a GitOps repo, um, which is what I run this from from now. Uh, awesome. I think I have looked at contributing to the catalog before, so maybe that might be a nice pathway. Um, but it'll really depend on workload and demand that we're getting for, you know, gotcha. if a lot of people are saying this is the feedback we're getting out of uh, beta and gamma release, then, you know, we'll double down on it. But if not, then we'll probably just leave it as a self-service GitOps type operation. So. Yeah, totally fair. Totally fair. No, that's awesome. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to share your screen now. So here we go. Cool. So, yeah, I think to start this recording, I, I'm just kind of tabbing through the different elements of the system that we saw. We saw how there was uh, key cloak deployed there. Um, this is an old ET cluster that we had. Um, just want to make sure this is running. Um, this is the OIDC provider we've gone for for beta release because it's easy and workable. Um, we have also all the other components deployed here. We have Fulcio and the Fulcio system namespace. We have the tough root set up in tough system and uh, I think Recore as well set up here, it's the transparency log. So um, just kind of verifying that the stack was properly installed to start this, which is a prerequisite. Um, and there's two pipelines that this demo is gonna cover. One of them is uh, verifying source code. And there's two elements to that verification of source code. Um, firstly is I've done some boilerplate on traversing the Recore log because Recore is very easy to search if you're searching for an image or anything else that's signed, um, like a, just a file or a blob. It's much harder if you're like looking for git commits. And so I thought it would be worthwhile to provide some scaffolding there for someone who, um, who might want that as part of their requirements. And the other one is just calling the git sign verify on the git commit itself, which is using the keyless flow to verify that the signature is valid. Um, so here I'm in this GitOps repo, which I'll share the link for later on. Uh, what I'm going to end up doing here is I'm actually going to trigger the pipeline first. So that way it can work in the background. We can inspect the logs um, and then I can explain what the manifests are within this repo and give you some background there. So if you want to extend it, you understand what the pieces are and how to kind of modify those. So I had a testing file here, which was already in history. You can see how if I call status, it, it recognizes that as an element there. Um, so I add this, and I'm going to commit this change. Um, 
I think I don't actually do the commit yet because I, I touch on how there are certain environment variables that need to be set, much like with cosine that was described earlier by Marcus and Sally. Um, Git sign also has these parameters that you need to set, but my stack has been already configured here. And in this GitOps repo at the newer branches, I provided automation scripts that will um, much like the other uh, environment scripts will source these variables and expose them so you don't have to set this. Um, so just look for those changes in the repo, which I'll show later. So I make the commit and you can see here how it opens up this key cloak authentication window and I'm authenticating there and it spits me back this T log index to verify, yes, you have signed this commit. It is in the transparency log we've received, it, right? So I think at this point, I'm waiting to see if my pipeline kicked off, which it actually shouldn't have um, because I didn't remember to push at this point. So I think I'm checking my namespace here for my pipeline run. Yeah. And it's not kicked off yet. So I just push here because that's what actually triggers the pipeline. And this is just leveraging native GitHub webhooks. I'll, I'll go into the configuration for those later on. And like I said, I have environment variables and scripts set up so that way it can automate this process. So um, I go to recent deliveries here and I think I'm just verifying the time of the most recent delivery and I'm matching it up to say this is the recent delivery. And now my pipeline run has kicked off from that push. Um, so I open up the logs and then we can dive into the code a little bit so you guys can understand what's going on here. It's gonna start by just installing some components. Um, and this demo was based off of the upstream uh, SIG store, but in this demo, I have already in, in history right now swapped out this for the productized binary. So those should be available um, as a PR, which will get merged probably later today. So this is the base pipelines manifest repo, which contains manifests that are generic. They're in both the pipelines. We have a git trigger binding here, which will take the data from the git push event, and it will propagate that to the rest of the pipeline so it can be used. We have the namespace in which all these things are deployed. Um, and we also have this SIG store trigger binding, which has the specific details for our task stack. It has those URLs. I think I'll show this in a second. Um, and much like the git push trigger binding, no, it's not showing it. The beauty of old recordings, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's going good so far though. So yeah, I think I'm just talking about how these these values will get passed through the pipeline. So yeah, here you go. You can see um, these are the SIG store, or in this case, the TAS uh, variables for those routes. So that way it can be used later on in the pipeline. This is just kind of like a static way that I can pass it there. Um, and this is all templated out in the automation scripts I talked about earlier, where mm. it will update these files programmatically. Tecton is like magic. Yeah, it is. It's, it's so powerful. Yeah. And uh, Tecton Chains is like a, what, what is it, like a subset of Tecton, but it includes um, the six store signing and verification yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 If you want to sign all your like uh, your task runs and pipeline runs and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the second demo I'm going to show here later on is actually using the, uh, the, the Tecton Chains. And we're looking into, there's one issue we're currently facing for productization there. And that is that we don't have control over the binary that's shipped with Tecton Chains. Uh, and so we're looking at, you know, maybe a, a volume mount, we can mount the binary and overwrite it. Um, so we can kind of pass our own task specific option in there, or maybe just work with the community to bring it in as an option. Um, so we're, we're in the, the tech and chains Slack channel right now, but that's still a work in progress at this point. So I think at this point, I'm just going over the different pieces of the pipeline. So you can see it's only got these two tasks where it will pull the source code. Um, and then the separate task where it actually does the verify commit signature. Um, Johnny, this is that task you were talking about, about how the internals work. We'll, right. we'll step into that in a sec. Um, this is the trigger template, which takes the aggregate of the two trigger bindings in terms of variables, and it will create the pipeline run from that. So that way it can kind of merge those into something that can be used by the pipeline. We have a event listener 
which is what's going to be listening for that GitHub webhook. Uh, it takes those two trigger bindings as input. We have a webhook secret key here, or a webhook secret, which is the, the password for the webhook. And it will filter on specifically push events to my repo using tel cell filtering. So this should kick off that verify source code um, trigger template as a result of, of the, the webhook values hitting this event listener. Um, and we had a sealed secret here. This was kind of just how we were managing uh, secrets at the time, but I think we've moved to just creating manual secrets with the automation scripts. So that's okay. been replaced. Um, and this is the actual task. So it starts by just installing the binaries, but again, this has been swapped out to productized binaries in the actual application at this point. Um, we set some logging on the task. We create aliases for the binaries that we just installed via Go. Um, and then this is that templating I was talking about earlier about traversing the recore log, where it, it's going to get all, it's going to search the recore log for all entries with signed with your email. And then it's going to read them into an array and iterate over them. Uh, I can wait for it to catch up. Um, here it's going to say, so if you have no entries in the record log that have been signed by your email, it's just going to log some information, say, hey, maybe you have the wrong endpoint, make sure everything's correct here. Um, otherwise, it's going to get the commit date and it's going to um, iterate through all the unique IDs it got from Recore, and it's going to add those as Recore entries. It's going to get the full JSON format of the Recore entry, and it's going to add that to the array. Then we're going to iterate over that Recore entry array, so the JSON that Recore has. And this is just doing some, some filtering here to make sure that the difference in time between the commit and the integrated time in Recore is less than 300 seconds or five minutes because that's roughly how long it takes for the pipeline to run. This is just a sanity check saying, hey, this is the pipe, this is the commit that kicked off that pipeline. Um, and so once it finds that correct recore entry, it's going to um, pull down the different things that it might need to be able to interact with the stack like the CTFE pub and the uh, Fulcio cert. It's gonna set some environment variables um, and then finally, it's going to call get sign verify. So we can step through these logs and kind of match it up with the code pieces we just saw. These are the binaries it's installing. Um, these are the unique identifiers that are signed by my email um, for git commits. This is just the, the task logging for going through those entries. We have 31 recore entries in the log. It's iterating over those. This is the JSON. You can see um, the different, you know, JSON body entries for the recore entries. Let's skip past this. I don't want to go through all these recore entries. These are the time comparison checks um, where it's going to find that time diff and it's going to try and find the, the smallest one here within five minutes. And there's going to be an empty check coming up soon. Yeah, right there we see dash N right? It's checking that, that that entry in Recore exists for the correct one that we found that met those parameters. We're downloading the, the full CO cert here. We're setting our configurations. And finally, we're going to call our git sign verify. And we see that same T log index verifying that it was the same commit that was made earlier, entry 144 right there, um, in that the it comes back as true and verified. So... That's the uh, the verify source code. I'm just highlighting here that this is that same commit. That's the verify source code pipeline. Um, I think this also touches on the signing, building and signing images with Tekton and chains. Um, this is a lot more clear cut of a pipeline. This is a lot more standard someone might use. It's just using the, the build a cluster task to build an image. Um, I use this handy dandy Pac-Man repo that Sally was kind enough to, to point me to. Um, you can see again, I'm, I'm starting by triggering the, the pipeline itself. I'm removing the testing file. I'm committing that. Again, authenticating to the OIDC key cloak. We get a new T log index that should trigger once I push. I do remember to push this time.
Yeah, this what I think is good. interesting about this is like mm -hmm. you're you're really going through it here, right? Like you're you're going through like the sausage making, right? The the pipeline, the task, the triggers, the event listers, all that stuff, right? So if if you're new to Tecton, if you're new to OpenShift pipelines, and you're you're like, man, how do I how do I if I don't want to use Pack, right? How do I use something else like the you know the event listener for GitHub? Yeah. This is a really good example of like this is exactly what you need to do. You need to set up your trigger bindings, your triggers, all that stuff, and then yeah, this is awesome. This is a very detailed, uh, <laughs> very detailed demo. Well, thanks. Yeah, there's a bunch of gotchas too, which is why I found it kind of important to to go in this much in depth. Yeah, no, this is great. So this is the other um, where you can see we're in the O2 directory for build and sign images. This is the separate event listener. Again, we mm -hmm. have a route exposing that event listener. Um, a separate pipeline, which has two tasks, pull the source code and then do the building and signing. Um, yeah, pretty simple. This is the standard yeah. build a cluster task. And it's using Tekton chains, which is why you, you would expect that there would be like a signing task here, but we don't have to do that because uh, it's actually getting done by Tekton chains. Uh, yeah. I just specify that full CO and record addresses here. Um, and say, like, what what do we want to get signed? How do we want to get signed? Yeah, and I, I don't remember exactly, but I think it's either in GitHub or somewhere where you can go and you, you look at the pipeline, or maybe it's even in, in OpenShift pipelines, where you go and look and you, there's like a lock next to it, right? And that says, that's basically like your visual cue that, hey, this thing did actually get signed by Tekton Chains. Yeah, I, I think I show that at the end, just kind of okay. like this. Oh, I'm jumping, my bad, my bad. I, no, no worries. It's a great point. I mean, these these things aren't like that's true in Quay. I'm not sure it does it in other registries. Yeah, that's what it was. It was yeah. Quay. Yeah. Quay. Quay. Yeah. There's there's also a neat um, cosine command call. It's cosine tree. If you pass cosine tree and then an image, it will show you um, all the signatures for that image, and it gives you a little picture next to it. That's nice. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't want to go or talk over this, so I I I want to mention something after you're done. Okay, I think we're we're getting pretty close here. So this is just the logs of it building. I show that it kind of got through all this and it pushed to this uh, this uh, my my Pac-Man repo here, and it's got this on testing branch. And I I just highlight the SHA there to make sure that it's the same when we reload this, and we'll see that it is the same testing branch. We see that little shield with the check mark next to it showing this tag has been signed via cosign, and we get an attestation pushed with it. Um, and I think it says that somewhere in the logs. Um, and the beauty of Tekton Chains is that also, along with this image being signed, it will also, as specified, sign the task runs and um, sign the pipeline runs if you want. You can really kind of go all out if you want provenance of everything in your pipeline. Uh, to some people, that might be overkill. But. Yeah, but that that is what is required in today's age. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. So like early on when when Vader was going through the the slides and was showing like, hey, you can sign your playbooks, you can sign this, that, and the other thing, right? Like, I literally had that conversation with um, somebody that was deploying this. You know, my my sense of time is so like crazy, but like <laughs> it was it was a couple months ago. Like we were talking about like how do I sign, you know, like certain things, or can I sign certain things? Because they, they wanted to sign literally everything. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it's not just about the signing, it's about verifying on the other exactly. end and setting yep. setting like your policies to, um, I, I can't even pull this image if it's not signed by this identity from this build system. And mm -hmm. that's that's where things need to go. Yeah. It's, it's zero one, trust. One of these size requirements, right? So yeah. to, mm -hmm. to uh, sign and attest, how it was built not only <clears throat> that i have to sign an artifact but also uh can we make sure that nobody was uh um, um was uh, 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 uh tempering mm, the temp tempering it was thank you was tempering <laughs> with, with the actual build system and therefore introduce something and that the so that's basically what salsa addresses yeah. and also the thing is it should all be part of your workflow right i mean the, the all you did was git commit and that triggered the sign mm -hmm. so sure. it's not like you are, have to do some other command yeah, that's that's one important thing with, with all the beauty we we have seen here and uh, with all the cool things uh, that greg is doing here um we should just say very good point uh, Peter, <clears throat> for the developer who is committing things and making sure that whatever he does is then signed and secured and everything uh it's just this one command and the rest is happening in the background 
and that's mm -hmm. basically one of the points of of six store of of tas it should be easy to consume yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so Sal, you're going to say something. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to make a point about the um, interactive browser flow of Six Store. Um, obviously, that's that's not what you do in in like a real world situation. So, um, some things we're looking at uh, are around workload identity. Uh, you can, if you're running on Amazon, you can easily plug in uh, the security token service, and I think GCP has the same thing, where um, you you give certain annotations on a service account that's running, say, a cosine pod, and then within that pod, um, an identity token is automatically injected, and so you can use that token in a non-interactive way um, in, within that cosine pod. So you can see it's it's sort of what happens with with tecton chains but um yeah in real life you wouldn't want that browser flow of six store um you'd want more like an identity and, and red hat's also looking at spiffy spire um, for workload identity too so those are just some things that are real interesting and i do have a demo on youtube and you can share that um, just showing the sts signing yep let me find it in here got it but yeah by default six store gives you that browser um you know, you click your you, you click the the identity provider you want to use. And... I think they also do add a they have a headless flow if you're using yeah. a bastion, but it'll just check some environment variable to make sure that like oh you have this ability you don't have this ability, um, and I don't think it works for us in a fully automated way to use the headless version right now because it'll make you you know open it in another tab. Uh, we need to like automate a curl command or some some other form of retrieving right. that that uh, ID. It'll pass you and say confirming that you are actually this person. You have the the unique identifier here. So, yeah. And the nice thing about workload identity is it takes a human out of it. It's yeah, actually exactly. it's actually like um, confirming that this service account in this namespace in this cluster is what signed this uh, workload. Yeah. Humans are always the attack vector. Every time, totally. if yeah, you can yes. remove one thing that they have to do, uh, it's you're going to be better off. <laughs> yeah, I agree. If, if you've ever seen me type, like you, you're like, yeah, dude, let's get rid of that guy because that's terrible. Like, it's, it's <laughs> awful. Don't go that far, Johnny. <laughs> it's it's awful. Like, especially if I'm talking and typing at the same time. Like, there is it, like it, it goes thought to keyboard, and that's not it's never good. So, <laughs> and that is how Skynet is born. Yeah, this is exactly what happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I, I think, I, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. I, was, I was just going to give you a chance to bail out really quick. So I, I know he's got to bounce. So yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity, Johnny. Really, really appreciate it. And thanks to the team also, right? I think, uh, and to everybody who attended. And uh, yeah, thanks. I have to jump on another call. So cool. Well, yeah. thanks for joining. Catch you later. Thanks, yeah. Veda. Thank you. All right, so I'll go ahead and finish this out. Sorry about that. I mean, to cut you off. Yeah, I was going to say with AI, with the advancements in AI and everybody, everybody just like yeah. use AI everywhere, like th these signing, verifying the data, the models, the, um, you know, that's where this is even more important is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And I think when you are like, you want to enable your developers, right, but you also need to protect your operations, you know, and so like, this is how you do that, right? That This is like that happy middle ground where I think developers can still do developer things and operators mm -hmm. can still you know manage their clusters and know that like Johnny's not going to put something in that's just going to like blow the whole world up. You know what I mean? Like, so it's, it's yeah, making yeah, sure yeah, that yeah. we have those limits in place. So that way it's like, oh, my bad. Yeah, I did that. Let me back that out and then fix it. And it's the, the blast radius is much smaller than you know, what it could be yes. or what it is maybe today. Yeah, and just one more thought. It used to be that just like the most security-minded people in an organization were those were the people that were handling like signing and verifying and the keys. And yeah. that's just not going to fly anymore. It has to be, a, you know, everybody has to know how to do this and 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 be yeah. comfortable with it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm, I, and maybe you're not the right group. Y'all aren't the right group to ask. But like, what what have you seen from a customer? point of view, right? Like on as, as far as like accepting something like this, right? Because I, I can see like the old school, the old mindset being like, whoa, whoa you know, like that Drake meme where it's like, I, I can see, yeah. I can see that. Um, but I can also see like a lot of the people that have been running Kubernetes and OpenShift clusters for a long time. I, I can see where they're really like, okay, this, 
this is the thing. Like this is awesome. So I'm kind of I'm kind of I'm curious what that balance is, and you know, do you get a lot of pushback, or are they or most customers pretty accepting of it? There's a decent amount who are pretty accepting of it. The thing is that with security, it's it's usually not very glamorous, right? It's like exactly. the people yeah. that know what they're looking for, they're ready and they're like, wow, this is great. Mm -hmm. And for the others, it's like, well, don't fix something unless it's broken. Um, but in terms of like what we get from customer feedback specifically is like, different platform integration, things besides OpenShift, uh, enablement on EKS, getting a RHEL version. It's really just getting it out there into their hands to to build this ecosystem, to provide more features, because at this point, we're very closely just tied to to the upstream product. And uh, it, you know, we would like it to be more kind of bring your own whatever, fit into yeah. anywhere. Um, any, did you have any thoughts, Sally, as well? I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, yeah, no, you weren't cutting me off. Yeah, br bring your own um, certificates, your own identity providers, um, and integrations, like you said, integrating with other CI CD pipelines with just um, a, a products across Red Hat are looking at how can we integrate six door. Um, so yeah. yeah, that's awesome. It, and it goes it, it, I'm like, sorry, my mind is this is the part where I was telling you in the pre, the pre story I get excited and I was like, ah. all right. Yeah. So it, it also kind of loops back into like the hybrid cloud story too, right? Like you're talking about EKS and AKS because we're not always just OpenShift, right? It's, it's, we have on-prem Kubernetes, we have EKS, AKS, GKE, all the stuff, right? All the things out there, Microsoft. So it's like, there's all these little, all these products and all these clusters that come together. And, you know, if we're like, sorry, bro, we only use open, or you can only use OpenShift with this. Like we're really, we're, we're, doing a huge disservice to our customer, right? Because we, we want them to take this and we want them to be successful with it. And that means like, we want them to be successful everywhere, not just in OpenShift, right? So, I mean, I, that, yeah, that's I'm, our I'm whole story. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that you don't have to be tied to one vendor. You can, yeah. you know, we let you do things wherever you need to do them, wherever you want, yeah. Nice, nice. I yeah, I would include your work there, Sally, on kind enablement, just for, you know, people testing and speed of development mm -hmm. and giving, giving them access to, you know, they want to take it somewhere else they can build it or make it make it work there yeah we have a kind uh, set up in our in the repository where you can spin up a kind cluster and it actually spins up key cloak and all the components yeah it's nice. pretty cool nice that is awesome I over, we wanted to thank you for that uh, as well so I stumbled over that oh that is cool <laughs> <laughs> i remember back in the day when we first started and we're like how are we going to test this and we yeah we figured it out i can't remember what even the obstacles were but it was fun awesome awesome we went way over didn't we no, it, it's good i i think like there's there's so much information right it, it's hard to bundle all that up into you know an hour you know so like i, I think i think we did good um yeah, if you, I, I want to give you guys a chance to, if you have any last statements, if there's anything else that you want to say, like do shout outs or whatever, you know, like just, you now's your time. Shout out to everyone uh, at Red Hat who's em embraced this, um, yeah, this project and uh, project. Except, except for Ryan Cook. Let's just, except for, every, yeah. Let's everybody leave except Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Emily Fox has been awesome as somebody to um, talk to about security in general across the company. She's new. She came on to Red Hat a few months ago. If you haven't spoken with her or had her on, on a stream, I recommend, yeah. So yeah shout I, out I, to Emily. I think we've had Emily on before a long, long time ago. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to go back and look. Yeah, all the names and dates and everything, they just kind of like, yeah, it's a border. That's what happens when you get 120 plus episodes. I know, man. Like we're big time now. We hit we hit 100, and it's just been it's been the end of the year has been awesome, right? I've, it's just been super busy, so it's awesome. Right, yeah. So Greg and Marcus, you guys, you wanna? Just thanks to the team. Everyone's been putting in a ridiculous amount of work. You know, there's a bunch of different projects going on, like Sally talking about the the Bifrost stuff, and you know, everyone making it a priority, doing everything in their power to make it work. Veda and the whole product management team, Sudhir, Akshar. Um, you know, people have just been absolutely amazing sports about everything. Yeah, and there's there's even more to come. So so basically, Veda and and as a as I jokingly said, so uh, there's salsa, there's guac. So uh, there's another upcoming project. I can't talk about it yet because uh, my boss would have to kill me then. Uh, no, just kidding. <laughs> um, the thing is, the thing is, just uh, uh, there's more to come, and I'm super grateful having been in services and seeing well, different customers doing different things with different technologies uh, uh, for years. The thing is, 
this is not the shiny thing that everyone talks about mm -hmm. unless something really bad happens. So uh, taking taking the time and also the investment, people at Red Hat don't work for free. I mean, I mean it's fun, but uh, there's <laughs> still kind of an uh, uh, investment. Taking that time to make it usable by our customers is a huge investment and a huge commitment. So this is a bit of marketing blah, blah. But the thing is, uh, it's it's not the AI thing. It's not the shiny thing that everyone talks about uh, that's in the news. It's the thing that nobody wants to talk about because as long as it's happening, you don't have to talk about it. And exactly. making that consumable and, and, and usable without... What, what I hear from developers is, yeah, security is good, but I couldn't care less well, until it blows up in your face and you're called at, at 3 a.m. in the morning because your product just uh, caused a major outage. Yeah, you just going to worry it. about it. But on the other hand, I don't want to slow down my velocity. So I, I don't want to I don't want to spend half of the day with security tools. I want to code. That's what I do. So um, making this usable and as you've seen, just one command line, the rest is happening in the background once it's deployed. Um, so that's basically what we're aiming for and, and taking that investment, although it's not the shiny thing. Um, yeah. Really but it, it's it's a lot like the trades, right? It's like you have plumbers, you have electricians, you have all the stuff that we absolutely need, but may not have the most glory behind it, right? Like, you know, like the, the plumber, you know, like, man, you never call the plumber and say, hey, man, thanks. Everything's great. You know, it's like you only call them when, when it's it's bad. You know what I mean? And so like this is the same thing with security. Yeah. When it when it hits the pan, it hits the pan hard. And you know, usually it's it's public and embarrassing, and so um, it could take you know, down a whole company. Yeah, it, I mean, and we've seen it unfortunately, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and 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 even worse, we we keep seeing it, and that's that's the bigger problem, right? Is that people aren't learning, and we just keep repeating ourselves, and yeah, it's it's pretty terrible. But yeah, it's when I was in consulting, I was just, in services just for a long to make time. Sure, that it really was a mistake that the competitor did. Just yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and, and when I was in services, right, like it, it was one of those things where, you know, like we're, we're, we're building these clusters, we're making them ready for production and stuff like that. It's, it's all the all the things that nobody really wants to, nobody really cares about, right? But it's the things that like, they care about when it ha when something bad happens, right? Like, there's that commercial where, um, you know, like there's a the, the security leak, right? And the guy's out in the audience, and he checks his phone, and like, oh, we're all set. You know, it's, that's, that's where we come in, right? That's where our thank you cards get, you know, you know get sent and stuff like that so um yeah it, it's not flashy but it is it's incredible and the demo i think is awesome like the detail that you guys put into that is i think amazing because there's so many things that you can take from that if you know open ship pipelines awesome check it out here's how you get all this stuff set up to interact with git here's how your tasks and stuff like that should like it i very well done it's what i'm trying to get to you know so thank you very much for doing that and thanks for putting in all the effort our pleasure thanks for having us johnny yeah thank you um, so again, for the, the viewers and listeners, if you're coming in late, um, if you want, if you have any questions and you're, you're watching after the fact, you know, feel free to send Andrew and I an email. I'm Johnny at redhat.com. Uh, Andrew is solely at redhat.com and he's out again, saving the world, you know, like he normally does. And so, uh, he'll be back with me in the, in the new year when we start this over. Um, but yeah, thank you, Sally. Thank you, Greg and Marcus and, and Vita for coming on. Uh, yeah, we really appreciate it. And you know, awesome demo. So thank you. And thanks for all your effort. You know, thank, thank everybody on your team for us, except for Ryan, you know, so. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, I'm going to, uh, let me send this off, but yeah, uh, thanks again. And um, yeah, we'll see you in the new year. Thanks. thanks.